the business is born out of friendship. I'm extremely lucky I get to do it with my two closest friends, and we, we met at college and always talked about how much we loved to set up a business together. We had the conversation year after year after year, never did anything about it, um, and found ourselves on a snowboarding weekend having the same conversation once again. And we said to each other, look, we've either got to stop saying this or get on with it, otherwise we're going to drive ourselves completely bonkers. So we said that weekend we had to come up with an idea that we would go back to London with and start putting it into practice. Otherwise, that was it. We couldn't ever talk about setting the business again. And I think that sort of deadline that we posed on ourselves gave us a bit of motivation. And so we spent the weekend talking about what the business idea could be. And we started here. This was our getting in point. We, we wanted to do something that made life a little bit better and a little bit easier. And it all sounded quite sort of moral and you know, something quite sort of noble. And we started there. And I have to say, that starting point as how and what our business idea could be led us to develop, which I can confidently say is the worst, the worst business idea in the history of bad business ideas. <laughs> uh, idea number one was the thing that we were going to call the amazing electric bath. <laughs> and it was all about this bath that would fill itself to a pre-designated level and pre-designated temperature or the touch of a button. And I'm the marketing guy, so I get really excited about, you know, the name, the amazing electric bath. And Adam's the sales guy, and he's really excited because he can sell it to hotel chains across the world. But John, the third of us, who'd done engineering at college, had the real light in his eyes because he realized this sort of validated his geeky degree course, and he could sort of work out technically how this thing was going to work. So Adam and I left him for an afternoon. We went snowboarding. He stayed in, started drawing things out. And we, review we reviewed the plans that evening in, in the bar in the resort. And we realized on first look at them that all of these plans involved electricity and, and water in close proximity. And I remember Adam pointing out we weren't going to make life easier and better for people. We were just going to make life a lot shorter for people, which is a <laughs> terrible consumer proposition. Anyway, my boss at the time was this really glamorous woman who I really fancied called uh, Kathy Reed. Said, uh, she gave me a bit of advice. She said, if you're thinking of setting your own business, make sure you properly understand your target audience. And we realized, actually, the only target audience we could say we understood was ourselves. So we went back to basics. We tried to think of something that we ourselves needed and wanted, the, something that fitted into our lives, a problem that we needed solving. And, and that's where Smoothies came from, because we were three 26-year-olds living and working in London, or quite frankly, drinking too much beer and eating too much pizza, and we're not looking after ourselves. However, we know that we're supposed to. We all, right? we all know the benefits of healthy eating, and it's just quite difficult to do it. There's something about modern life that conspires against people being healthy. So that was where, where the idea came from. We wanted to solve that little riddle. We wanted to make it easy for people to do themselves some good. And smoothies came out of that because they just crushed up fruit, put it into a bottle. The idea is you could grab one on your way into work and start a, a healthy habit. 